Hey everyone and welcome to another devlog video for the NPC manager system. Today I want to show you guys a few things that I've been working on for the past few days. Uh, actually the last video I did mention that I had worked on a blog detection system and that's one of the things that I want to show you guys. Um, I worked on this on and off for a while and the idea was to somehow detect if the NPC was stuck either behind the wall or outside of the bounds or maybe there's a bunch of NPCs trying to go through a very narrow corridor and they're not moving, um, something, right? Because now we're walk, we're talking with a lot of NPCs that are going to be in crowds, right? That was the idea. And for the longest time, I just could not find a very good solution. Um, so I tried a bunch of things, including doing traces for NPCs nearby, and then if there's many NPCs nearby, uh, go ahead and disable collision and all kinds of things, but nothing really worked the way I wanted to. Uh, so a few nights ago, I was very, very close to just simply kind of deleting that uh, part of the code, um, you know, and then just kind of revisiting later because I just, I was not happy with it. And then I uh, decided to give it one last try and started looking through the documentation. And I actually found a few nodes that actually did help. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. So if I, if I click play here, you'll see that all this is doing right now is that this guy here is going to a bounce and is going to a random location within the bounds and it works perfectly fine. Um, but what happens if I grab this guy and I put him in here and if I look at the nav mesh, you'll see that clearly there is no possible path, right? The nav mesh is, uh, cut off here and cut off here because of this wall, and he's trying to go somewhere here. Yet if I click on simulate, you'll see that he wants to go there, but nothing really happens. Uh, he's not really failing. If I actually go to the task and I click here, you'll see that uh, that is actually uh, saying is success. So because of the way the nav mesh works, this NPC doesn't know that he can't get there, right? It's, it's not a fail state. It says success, it's just for some reason not moving right now. Um, so I actually found a way to check whether the NPC should be moving and then whether the NPC is actually moving. And that works even though in this case, it should be failing in my opinion, but it's not failing, it's, it's succeeding. Even with this issue here with the AI move, I still found a way to detect that. Um, so let me show you what that does. So if I go to uh, NPC controller here, there's a new section called block detection. And I'm just going to go ahead and enable it. And this basically says that you're going to check on a frequency of one second. So every second you're going to check if the NPC should be moving and it's not moving. And it's going to try a total of 10 times, but of course you can change that. And if it tries to move 10 times, and it cannot move, then it'll teleport to its destination. And that may not be the most elegant solution, but I found that it's a simple and um, it just simply works. You can see here that the NPC is blocked. He's trying to go there, he's trying to go there, and he's trying and trying and trying. And eventually, after 10 tries, which is basically in this case 10 seconds, it'll go ahead and teleport, you can see that, to its destination, and then go ahead with the rest of his routine. So simple, quite simple actually, in my opinion, simple and elegant, and it works on almost every situation that I can think of. Um, so in this case, if for whatever reason, your NPC is out in the world, and if you have a dynamic world and he just gets stuck somewhere, or maybe he gets bumped out of the playable area and there's no nav mesh, and he's trying to do, go away with his, uh, you know, his schedule, he'll still gonna find a way to go back. Um, and yes, the teleport is not, you know, that nice, but, but it, it makes sure that once it, it happens, then it just, the NPC is back to his routine. And the cool thing about this method is that it works even if there's no nav mesh. So I put this guy up here and you can see that I'm looking at the nav mesh and the nav mesh is built up to this level here. So up here, there's actually no nav mesh at all. Uh, and if I click on play, you can see that this guy's going crazy because it's failing and every time it fails, it picks up another random location within the, within the bounds, right? This is why it's going crazy like this. And even in that situation, you see that eventually after 10 tries, he comes back and teleports.
and now he's back in the nav mesh area and now he can go ahead and go on with his routine so i'm really happy with this uh and i'm also happy that i can ship this on initial release with the um, with this feature uh so you guys have that now obviously there is a cost because that's just one more timer for every single npc that's going to be checking every second so obviously you could make this check every two seconds for example or 10 seconds or whatever in how many tries um, and you can play around with those settings or maybe you just want to enable this to certain npcs if you know that there's an area that has really complex geometry uh, maybe you just enable it for those only uh, so yeah so that's that uh, and i've added two other features and we're going to go to the showcase level here and these two features have actually been suggested by two different members of the community on Discord. Uh, so this is why I kind of always say, if you have any suggestions, please do let me know. I, I write everything down. Uh, but one of the one of the members on Discord asked if there was a way to add your own behavior, right? So right now, and you can see here, I mean, these are all the behaviors. You can go to a point of interest, which is kind of the main thing with the stations. But your NPC can roam uh, in, in bounds. It can go to nearby waypoints, random waypoints. It could follow a path or go to a, to a specific location in your world. But now you can actually write your own code and, 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 and specify a custom behavior. And I'm going to just uh, select play here. And you can see, I'm going to maximize, that in this case, the, the behavior that I, that I coded for this guy is there's going to be two different tasks. One, which he's just growing up and uh, up and down every couple of seconds. And the other task is when he's just rotating. And then he switches between tasks. And these are two custom tasks that you can see there that have been coded. But you can obviously make anything, right? Um, this is done by, by creating a child uh, of the uh, MPC controller and then overriding a function and overriding an event and then you can write literally anything you want so you could do traces you could write your own special code if you have specific npcs that you want really complex behavior you can now go ahead and do that uh, so that's really really neat uh, and even though this is a super silly example you're just rotating the npc and then rescaling him it shows you that you can actually write your own code and obviously, the most valuable thing is that you guys will be able to open this uh, guy, the blueprint, and see exactly how I did it. So if you ever wanted to do that, now you have a very nice example. Uh, and the other suggestion by another member was to actually be able to add logic to how you select the task. So if you remember on the last video, if you have a profile, it's just a list of tasks. And those tasks are usually followed in, in order, right? Task number one then number two, then number three, and it just kind of goes like that. Uh, I've added a way to select a random task. So that was another suggestion from YouTube. And now you can select uh, random task, but it still doesn't give you control. So it can go sequential, it can go random, and now it can go custom. And custom basically uses a function that returns the task index. And that means that now, if you override the function on a child, you can now add your own logic and determine which task you want your NPC to follow. So this guy here has the exact same profile as this guy here. Yet, notice that all he's doing right now is spinning. That's because he's only doing task number one. And you can see here, actually, I have the widget enabled. Uh, I, wanna, I want this um, custom order um, notice to uh, to disappear, and I'll show you guys here. You'll see that right here, oh, come on, he's, uh, he's always on the same task. You can see that task index is zero, and even when the task timer goes, goes down, you can see it's two, one, zero, he's going to go back and continue to repeat the same task index. So right here, he's basically stuck on the same task. And when I step into this button, notice that now I have manually switched the task index to one, and now he's going, he's being resized. So I am controlling the task from an external blueprint, and now I have that kind of control. So think about what you can do here. You could have a special profile for an NPC, maybe you have a specific event, 
and you want a specific task to only trigger when something happens. Maybe the player goes into the house and, and he tri trips over a trigger and just at that moment the NPC will do a task which means that he's going to go somewhere or, or play an animation or something. You can get really creative here. But the point is you have now control over the logic and over the action. And those two things, if you know what you're doing with Blueprint, can make a huge difference. And you can see that now I switched it back to task zero and now he's, he's spinning. And I go back and now he's uh, resizing. So you can see here on the left how every time I step, I'm changing the task immediately on the NPC, which is a level of control that we didn't have before. So thank you guys for the suggestions. Uh, I think they are really, really useful. I was kind of thinking about this, but after I heard it and talked to you guys on Discord, I realized, you know what, this is something that I think should be on the initial release. It does make a big difference and it would give you guys huge flexibility to add whatever you want, right? Because there's always the chance that you have some special behavior that you want to add in your game. And now you don't have to tinker with my code. You just create a child and then you can go ahead and write as much logic as you want and it will not interfere with the system. So really, really excited about these two things. And uh, last thing I wanna show you guys is uh, station interactions. And I don't think I've shown this before, uh, but basically the idea here is that you may want an NPC to not only play an animation when he's in a station, but actually make something happen. And you can already do that, but I made some changes to make this a lot easier. So basically uh, what I have here is I created a new station and this is called station push button. And I think I showed an image of me making this animation in Blender the other day on um, Discord. But basically I created a new animation of the, of, of, the, of the mannequin basically standing there and pressing a button. And I created this little simple button prop, just like a little box with a, with a big red button. And I want something to happen when this button is pressed. And what I can do here is there's a section here under the station called interaction, interaction options. And you can simply uh, either enable or disable and say, hey, I want to enable interactions. And then you have a list of actors that you want to interact. And in this case, we want to interact with simple platform, just this guy here. It's a very simple blueprint that I made. And all it does is goes, uh, up and down with a timeline, basically a platform, right? And then what happens is that you can then add a delay and say, hey, once this uh, station is occupied, wait three seconds and then activate those actors. And I'm using the same blueprint interface that I'm using uh, for, for activating anything else. So it's, this, it's one single interface. And what's gonna happen is, that when the NPC comes here and presses the button, he's actually going to activate this platform, which is going to allow me to go up here. Uh, so let's click play. And I specifically didn't want to load him until you got close because obviously I want you to see the whole thing happen. So if I come here and I say station interactions, stations can also interact with other objects in the scene via an interface, step forward to see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and step forward. This guy spawned. He goes there, he presses the button, and now this blueprint is activated. Awesome, huh? I, I thought this was really neat. And of course I can now step on the platform, I can go up and I got another thing. As you can see, you can set up stations to activate other BPs in your scene easily. So this setup here, and again, you can see how I set it up, is going to work by giving you guys the ability to have NPCs actually um, perform actions in your world. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is another thing that I thought was super, super useful. Uh, and along with this change, I had to make some improvements and some options to the stations. And you can see them here. Uh, you have now the option to allow player interactions while the NPC is in the station before you were always allowed. And I made a change to uh, that you can disallow it. So for example, I don't want the player to interrupt the NPC pressing this button. So even if the player goes and tries to, uh, to interact, the NPC will just ignore the request, press the button. So this is uh, by default disabled here. 
uh, when the NPCs go to bed, for example, you probably don't want the NPC uh, interacting with the player if he's supposed to be asleep, so you can disable it there by default. You can also have a station be used once, and this is something that I've added specifically for this, because you want the NPC to only press this button once to activate this platform. You don't want the NPC to come back again and press the button again when this action already happened. So you can now have a station be usable only once, and as long as uh, you know, and as long as this is activated, after it's done once, it will be removed from the queue, and the manager, the, the POI manager, will basically ignore the station. No other NPCs will use it. And finally, play animation once that was also added because of this use case. And in other words, it means that it will only play the animation and then go to the next next station. So even if you have on your profile that the NPC should be, um, you know, 10 seconds or 30 seconds uh, on the station, it will still just automatically move to the next station as soon as the animation is done. So that is, again, even more control. Now imagine you have this case with the custom task and the custom logic here. You could have an NPC inside a POI roaming around and you could have a custom task that is basically going to the station here and pressing the button and then when the player goes in it trips the, the with a trigger and it changes the npc to the custom task and that custom task is going to be to come here press a button and activate something in the world so you can start seeing how you can change all of these behaviors and custom code to really get a lot of behavior that you would need in your game uh, so really really exciting stuff and i'm glad i could i could get this done and kind of show you here in the showcase level as you're walking around uh, so hopefully it gives you guys a very good idea of how flexible and robust the system is uh, gets you guys excited for what you can do with this uh, as a, <laughs> at least as excited as i am because i'm just thinking about all the possibilities here um, so yeah that is pretty much it for today just wanted to show you guys this there's still a few additional things that I have to do. Um, mostly bug fixes at this point, trying to get the proximity system to work in certain cases and things like that. But I'm still working really hard on this and trying to get this done as soon as possible so I can submit to Epic and uh, get it to you guys. So uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, leave any comments or suggestions uh, below or if you haven't joined our Discord. Come join us. I'm, I'm usually there and posting screenshots and talking to you guys. And, and I get a lot of ideas just from folks there. So, so yeah, let me know what you think. And I will talk to you in the next video.